Hello, I'm Yen Deschamps from Crazy Loser in a Box, and that is my bunny behind me. That's Cottontail Jim. You've probably heard of him if you've listened to the Chernabog album in um, the songs Whoa My Bunny, Cottontail Jim, probably others. I actually haven't listened to that album in a while, but uh, he no longer wears black pants because the son of the original owner demanded them back. So now he's a naked bunny. Anyway... <laughs> Today's controversial thought topic is the selfishness of suicide. Is it really selfish at all? I will be exploring that through the lens of my own upbringing and then through the lens of the society in which I live. You are welcome to tell me what a horrible and insensitive person I am for even bringing it up, and I am welcome to refuse to care. Actually, when I first started writing the script, um, I was heading towards a completely different conclusion than what I ended up in. And you're going to kind of get to see that journey. Uh, I don't remember half of what I wrote, hence the need for a script. I'm very easily distracted, tend to lose my train of thought, uh, and I'll be piping in and kind of interrupting myself as we go along, which is kind of my style. You might have seen that in my last video as well um, in this series. If you've seen any of the work Evan Dub Productions is involved in, you've probably seen the DOF series gleefully engages in suicide baiting and arbitrarily murdering its characters. Although note... Only the characters that are based on either the writer of that character can kill them off, or if it's a fictional character. But if they're based on a real person that isn't the writer, we're not allowed to kill them off. So, uh, that is, uh, yeah, that is uh, Mex Wales' fiat, and we've been sticking to it, because we don't want to be, we don't want to be too mean. I mean, come on, we have some limits. Uh, my band, Crazy Loser in a Box, has songs wishing others were dead and songs wishing the writer, usually me, was dead, as you do. Growing up, death wasn't seen as a big deal, and from my preteens on, being suicidal is just a fact of life. What do I mean by this? First, it may be helpful if you're familiar with my background. I was raised to believe that everyone dies and therefore death is no big deal, but if you kill someone, it'll stay in your soul. But if you kill yourself, you're selfish and a coward, and you're slapping God in the face for rejecting his gift of life. Actually, it's very strange now that I'm actually stating that I was taught that death is no big deal, but if you kill other people or yourself, you're automatically a bad person. Um, I'm, I can't follow my father's train of thought on that now that I'm actually seeing it and hearing myself say it. Uh, he is a fundamentally, like he was raised Mormon, and then he broke away from the church, and then he came to Jesus um, as like in his twenties, and now you know he's he's a fundamentalist. He used to lead a, a religious movement back in Europe. Um, yeah, I don't. There's some definitely problematic things with the way that he thinks. Um, However, I don't want to engage in any bashing of religion. You know, um, we're not going to be doing that. I'm not going to, I'm going to delete comments that are engaging in religion bashing. Um, I'm just not going to deal with it because yes, fundamentalism is a problem. Uh, yes, some beliefs, when you act on them, they're not great. Um, however, believing in God is not a problem. Believing in Jesus is not a problem. That's actually been very helpful to me throughout my life. So just no religion bashing, please. Anyway, a byproduct of this upbringing is that when natural disasters or other what people called tragedies hit and thousands of people died, I didn't really understand why everyone was making such a fuss over it. And I quickly got bored and annoyed. I got in some trouble in school for stating the opinion I was raised to have, and then the school got in trouble with my dad for religious discrimination. Um, but basically, as long as no one I knew personally went away forever, it didn't affect me. And even when my dad's cousin, whom I just met, died of cancer, uh, my training that mourning was selfish kicked in, and I felt basically nothing. The only time I felt sad about death was when I was growing up was when my cat died, and that was because I didn't know if cats went to heaven or not. Okay, that was a long tangent regarding my relationship with death as it relates to my upbringing. Now on to a long tangent about my relationship with suicidal ideation. And that's going to come up like a hundred times in this. So, 
Growing up, I was taught that threatening suicide was just trying to get attention and actually killing yourself was cowardly and selfish, which many people think is just a horrible thing to say. I mean, it's, it's certainly, it's very rude to say it. Um, now, because of some stuff that happened outside the home and whatever weird chemical stuff was going on in my brain, I started trying to kill myself when I was 12. There were times when I was trying every other day and times when it was just every other week. I tried to talk about it in emergency psychiatric once and was basically told that some of those 200 something attempts didn't count. And that's 200 something attempts from age 12 through age um, 27 or 28. So not like, not like 200 times in one year. Um, anyway, I was basically told that some of those 200 something attempts didn't count because they couldn't really kill me. So that makes me not really want to get into it in detail. Uh, but yeah, in case you're wondering, some of those attempts did happen in front of my dad, and then he insulted me and stormed out because he didn't want to give me the satisfaction of attention or whatever that logic is. Okay, so that's all background information, which I'm sharing so that if you have a working theory of mine, you can see where I'm coming from with this. While I've been told I have psychopathic-like and antisocial-like tendencies, I do at least try to be fair from an intellectual standpoint, even if I can't always comprehend things emotionally. And again, I want to point out that that is due to whatever chemical imbalance that there is in my brain or whatever got jolted loose. It has nothing to do with religion. Those two things, they're not related. Okay? All right. Now that's clear. I think that um, whether suicide is selfish or cowardly really depends on the other circumstances surrounding the individual's life and death. I read an article, must have been a couple years back, about a 23-year-old widow whose husband committed suicide knowing that she had no family and that his family would refuse to take care of her. He did make plans to provide for her after his death, but his family made sure they were not carried out. And from the tone of the article, it seemed clear to me that he was aware this was a probability. I had an extremely negative impression of the husband after reading it because he chose to let his wife flounder in the hands of people he knew would refuse to provide for her. I thought that if he had really cared about her, he would have stuck it out and done his duty as a spouse. I read more recently a novel in which a character expressed a deep pain from her mother's suicide because it seemed to her that her mom would rather be dead than be her mother. I don't think anyone, well, I don't think most people should ever feel like someone would rather be dead than be their parent or their spouse or what have you. Now, they're, the exceptions to that are just people who have honestly earned my distaste and I'm not going to be naming names although if you listen to some of my music you know might be a little clearer who I'm talking about or maybe it might not you know my, my lyrics are kind of all over the place anyway on a personal note I've had a couple of friends die recently one from organ failure and one from murder both of them were exemplary human beings, and I've been pretty open in my personal life about how angry I am that they had to die while certain scum of the earth excuses for humanity insist on remaining alive. That did change my relationship with death somewhat, in that I realized that despite my own intrusive thoughts and suicidal ideation, I would never want to put my friends and family through what I went through when I got the news. So that's what I have to say on the side of shaming people for how their choices affect others. Let's move on to what I have to say on the side of what might cause people to make those choices. I mentioned my own experience with intrusive thoughts and suicidal ideation. It's a popular belief that suicidal ideation stems from depression, and that can definitely be true. In my experience, though, I'm much more likely to try to kill myself when in a state of anxiety or frustration. When I'm depressed, all I want to do is sleep or possibly just sit there and be sad if I'm in a situation that doesn't allow me to sleep. Uh, like when I was when I was committed, like I was committed in 2014, um, they did not like me sleeping all day. They obviously they weren't great. They were very controlling. Anyway, um, that that wasn't EPS though. EPS doesn't give a shit. This was uh, after that. Um, I was put in uh, momentum, and they just. And they're like, no, you can't sleep all the time. You have to participate in this, this, and this, even though none of those things really helped. Anyway, um, when I'm frustrated or anxious, my brain jumps right to might as well die. One major cause of frustration and anxiety is feeling helpless and feeling not in control of a situation or of your own life. A lot of people engage in self-harming behavior because they feel like hurting themselves is the only thing they can control. Or in other cases, they can choose to harm themselves before anyone else can 
cause harm to them. Feeling helpless and powerless is probably the most frustrating thing in the world, and a lot of people cope with it by just choosing to leave the world, or by telling people that they want to, or by engaging in self-harming behaviors that go too far and end up actually killing them by accident, and then those deaths are ruled a suicide because, you know, they're self-harming, you know? Obviously they meant to. Anyway. With that in mind, I definitely don't think that expressing that you feel lost or helpless is selfish or cowardly. I think acting on those feelings of lostness or helplessness when it's the way that's most ingrained in you for how to cope is not an act of selfishness or of cowardice. Okay. Everyone says to get help, to talk to people, to use better coping skills, but that isn't always an option. When people are at that point, they might feel like a burden if they reach out, even if people have expressly told them, hey, look, you can talk to me, I'm here for you. Or they actually might have tried to seek help in the past, but been dismissed as just looking for attention. Yeah, here's the thing about that. If someone expresses that they want to stop being alive, or they're doing things that may cause them to stop being alive, they are, in fact, reaching out for help. That is a cry for help. But it doesn't really do them any good if no one notices or pays attention, does it? Obviously, a cry for help is looking for attention because they are trying to draw attention to a problem so someone will help them with it. Being dismissive of... Being dismissive of someone who is genuinely in that much pain is going to make them feel worse, more frustrated, more helpless, and then if they do go forward and end their life, you're stuck with the knowledge that you could have helped them through their feelings and their situation, but you chose not to. I understand knowing that feels a bit unpleasant. All right. Uh, side note, about the whole, like, suicide baiting being illegal because then if someone kills themselves, that's on you. I don't believe in that. I think that, like... If you tell someone, well, you might as well die, and then they go and kill themselves, I think they made that choice to do that. I don't think that shouldn't necessarily be the responsibility of the person who said that, but, of course, everybody is always looking for someone else to blame. <laughs> Everybody's looking for someone else to blame. Everybody wants to be a victim, so that's just... I, I do not agree with that at all. Um, anyway, back to the script. Um... But what if someone says that they want to kill themselves in order to stop you from breaking up with them? Ooh, that's evil and manipulative, right? Well, it can be. But life contains nuance, and thus, that isn't always the case. They could genuinely feel lost, or like life is not worth living without a partner to live it with. Now, if they're engaging in behaviors that make you feel like you're a prisoner, then you're right to end that relationship and claim your own life back. But you can do that without accusing someone of having evil intentions. Uh, unless they, like, have a pattern of abuse, and then they absolutely have evil intentions. But, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm going off script again. I hope nobody's going to be too confused. Anyway, if you're the sort of person who feels obligated to avoid leaving people, please consider that putting some distance between you may also help them regain a sense of self that isn't dependent on another person. You can send them a list of resources and urge them to follow up. If you're the sort of person who just prefers to distance yourself from anyone who acts poorly towards you, then you're obviously free to do so. Don't ever feel obligated to stay with someone who suffocates or sabotages you, um, but also recognize that while their behavior may be manipulative, they may not necessarily have the intention to cause emotional harm. It's okay to distance yourself without maligning their intentions. And also, if someone says, I'm going to kill myself if you break up with me and then you break up with them and they kill themselves again that's not your responsibility that's like in the same vein as my other aside earlier so i say this because of my own experiences one of the things that causes me to try to die sometimes is feeling abandoned i'm very sensitive to it i don't take breakups well i don't take rejection well i can react badly when my husband needs space and i'm having a needy day but to me when i express that i want to kill myself i'm being honest that i'm not trying to ruin someone else's day it's not that I'm trying to force them to stay with me. It's that I need someone to be with me in that moment, and I don't know who I can talk to. It's a very frustrating thing to live with, both on his end and mine. Luckily, it doesn't happen nearly as often as it used to, and I'm working with professionals to help me identify and implement more socially appropriate coping mechanisms. Oh, yeah. Coping mechanisms are a crapshoot, and finding the right team of professionals can be really difficult. A lot of them are trained to... It's like talking with robots who have programmed responses rather than interacting with people on an individual level. The first things they're trained to suggest to do before acting on a feeling like counting to 10 or other generic crap like that 
don't work for me. Sometimes I'm not even aware of what I'm feeling before I react, so there isn't time to implement anything, although that is more regarding anger. Um, like that's regarding anger management, which is like a whole different kettle of fish, but anyway. Sometimes I try to have a conversation about how I'm feeling, but whomever I'm talking to doesn't understand where I'm coming from, so I end up escalating and it culminates in self-harming in front of them. But I've also gotten better at stopping myself in the middle of something and asking for help. Well, sometimes demanding help, like, uh, I'll be like, hey, aren't you going to help me? <laughs> you know, kind of like that. Because it's like, I'm frustrated, I'm acting out because I feel helpless and I recognize that I need help and I'm asking for it, which... Like, the way that I do it isn't great. I'm still working on that. I'm still evolving in that way. But it's better than if I were to just, like, mm, nope. You know. Because I have, you know, I have a family now. Or, I mean, I had family before, but I have a family now. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually get to that, so... I think it's worth it to at least try to find a team of professionals to work with you if you have trouble regulating your behavior or handling your emotions or if life just generally sucks and you don't see why you should have to be a part of it anymore. I don't think you should cheat yourself out of the opportunity to find out what happens next, especially if you have kids or a spouse or pets who depend on you. Your pets won't understand why you're gone. Your kids won't understand that life just got too hard and you didn't know a better way to deal with it. They'll take it personally, like the girl in that story who thought her mother would rather be dead than be her parent. And your spouse and your friends won't understand why you didn't reach out and try to find help. Okay, okay, but what if some of you don't have friends or family or pets? What if you don't think anyone would actually miss you? That's a lot harder. I'm actually not really sure what to say about that because I do remember what that felt like, but I also remember that whenever someone gave me advice that wouldn't work for me personally, I just got pissed off and that made me want to do it more. I don't want to put you guys through that, but I still want to give advice that isn't some bullshit about calling a hotline. Um, okay, so try to think about five things that you like, just in general. It could be an animal or a food or a character in a book or a singer or a favorite smell. Write them down, and then try to think of ways you want to experience those things again. Like, if your favorite animal is a vampire bat, you could make up a story about how you're going to get to see one one day. Or if you have a favorite food, you could try to make plans to order it. Um, whether you're writing a story or coming up with an action plan, your brain will hopefully experience a release of chemicals that'll make you feel motivated towards something more pleasant. Or, if you think that sounds stupid, and you're just all the way miserable, and now you're pissed off at me for giving corny advice, think of someone you absolutely fucking hate. Preferably a real person. And then think about how much it would suck if the world contained one of them and none of you. Okay? Don't kill them. The point of this is that no one is supposed to die here. Think of something you're better at than them, like a skill, like writing, or staying in shape, or speaking another language. Then go practice the hell out of it. Now you have something to gloat about. Or, if you don't think you're better than them at anything, well, first of all, I don't understand why you dislike someone if you don't think you're superior to them in some way. But secondly, pick up a new skill or just, I don't know, indulge in something other than your own frustration and misery. I personally am productivity-minded, and I don't even like to try to sleep when there's other stuff I want to get done. So, um, one thing that has helped me is... Uh, I can't die until I finish this project because nobody else is going to continue this project without me. That applies to literally all of my projects. No one else is as motivated as I am to continue them. So I can't die until they're done. Sorry, can't do it. Um, and that helps a lot. And I hope that you have something like that. Um, if you're watching this and you're suicidal and nothing I've advised here will help you in any way feel better, then please go out of your way to prove me wrong and tell me something that will. Tell me how you can do any one of my projects better than I can. Tell me whatever kind of opinion you have. Take that time out of your day and write it down there as long as it'll keep you alive for a few more minutes. After saying all that, in the end, I figure most people just don't think the act of suicide all the way through, so in most cases it's just thoughtless, not selfish. If you've made it this far, I hope I've at least given you something to think about. Because this is a particularly touchy subject, I should clarify that I don't want my viewers to die, and in fact, I'm hoping to provoke some thought and some action you guys can take instead of dying. In the meantime, if you happen to hear any of my songs that encourage death, you're probably not the individuals those songs were written about. In fact, I'm, I'm pretty sure those people 
don't follow me or any of my projects, which I'm actually happy about because screw them. Not literally though. Um, anyway, so don't, anyway, don't take those songs to heart. And if you happen to hear any of my songs with suicidal lyrics, keep in mind, I'm producing every song I ever wrote in my entire life. And some of them may be outdated. Um, like my life is very different now from when I wrote, um, Broken Sorority. I was like 14 when I wrote that. I was in a pretty bad place and now I'm in a much better place and I don't experience the same feelings that I experienced back then towards the same set of individuals, okay? Also, and I should have said this earlier, do not call the cops on someone who's suicidal. Police are not trained to help people through those emotions. They're trained to drop people off at emergency psychiatric services. And let me tell you, EPS, at least in my area, do not give a single half a shit about helping people not be suicidal anymore. Someone pulled that shit with me once, called in a fake suicide attempt about me because I wouldn't take her call at fucking midnight on a work night? No. No. Mm -mm, no. Even if you don't have spiteful intentions like she did, you're probably going to do more harm than good by getting someone committed or put in observation. All right. Anyway, that was a long rant. That is the end of the script. Um, I'm not sure if I actually had more to say on that, but um, the conclusion that I started out with was, oh yeah, you know, it's, it's selfish and it's predictable, but you're not supposed to say it because you're a mean person if you say it. And then the conclusion that I actually ended up with when I sat back and thought about it and was writing about it is, no, it's not selfish. Um, necessarily people just don't think it all the way through they don't think about you know what other thing like they or they may be overthinking but in the wrong direction okay and my intention is not to really criticize if you are thinking in that direction it's more to just say hey um, there's a direction an alternative direction that your thoughts can go to keep you alive you know, at least for a little while longer. Like, if if you just want to, like, sit there and um, write out all the stuff <laughs> that I did wrong in this video, I'm not even, I don't, I don't edit controversial thought videos, um, so all the flubs and bloopers and stuff are, are still there, which might make it a little harder to engage people, but it, I feel like it's more important to just get the opinions out there so people can just start being mad at them now. And then, you know, if they take time out of their day to be mad at me or whatever, that's time that they're taking um, not trying to hurt themselves because they're yelling at me. And I, like, I know what I'm doing. I, I know people are going to be offended. I don't particularly care. Okay, like, but I also don't want anyone watching this to die. Okay, I'm not going to encourage suicidal ideation, even if it wasn't illegal, which, again, I think that's a bullshit law, but even if it wasn't illegal, I wouldn't be encouraging that, because why? Like, the only time that I ever have gone there, um, it's been with people who have upset me on a personal level, and if you're leaving mean comments on my video and you're just like some fuck off on the internet, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, that's a lot different from when I'm saying, hey, such and such is sacred to me and uh, you need to respect that. And then people just go out of their way to disrespect that. And then I'm like, oh, well, uh, I'll find something that they said and I'll attack them about it. Uh, this actually happened on um, Father's Day. Someone um, was shitting on everyone else's parade. I said, hey, stop that. And they're and then they like told me their life story, which I never even asked for, and were whining about how like their daddy didn't love them or whatever. And I was like, well, you're not supposed to love the afterbirth, but that's because they pissed me off on a personal level. All right, that yeah, no, I'm not gonna encourage. <laughs> Point is, is I'm not gonna encourage my viewers to kill themselves on a video about suicide. I don't want my viewers to kill themselves. I don't want, you know, random strangers on the internet to be suicidal. And um, generally, when I do see someone who's feeling that way, who's feeling particularly down um, on social media, I come across them, um, I do let them know, hey, you know, 
I'm here, I see you, I care about you, you know, at least to a degree. I care enough to say something. Um, I do wish that I could reach out to every individual that I'm friends with um, and talk to them about their day. Unfortunately, I do not have the bandwidth to do that. I have a baby and I have a job. I have multiple ongoing projects and sometimes I can spare the time. Um, and most likely I will make, you know, time for it if it, if it's someone I've known for X amount of time or if it seems like a particularly dire situation. Um, otherwise, I'll mostly just tell them, hey, um, you know, let me know how you're feeling and I'll get back to you when I can, you know. I might not engage with them right away, but I'm not going to be like, oh, pff, you don't matter. You know, like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. Um, except in individuals who have abused that privilege. Uh, but we're, you know, they're in the minority. Okay. Um, I do think that there are people who do fake suicidal ideation in order to get attention. Not like the kind of attention where it's like, hey, hey, I need help. Hey, you know, but the kind of people who are. Like, they want to take attention away from other people who really need it. Um, but those people are in the minority. I make fun of them in my show. But I don't want anybody to actually think that most people are like that. Because most people are not like that. Most people are sincere. Most people, if they have a problem and they speak out about it, it's a real thing and you should take it seriously. Or you should err on the side of taking it seriously. Okay. Anyway, uh, with that off-script ramble and a whole bunch of offensive stuff I probably said there, uh, I'm going to let you guys go. Uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next topic. Um, leave your comments below. Again, I will delete anything bashing religion, and I will delete any... Uh, like, if someone tries to suicide bait me, I'm going to delete it too, because, like, there's no reason I need to be dealing with that. But otherwise... You know, if you have sincere intentions, if you're posting in good faith, go ahead, leave a comment. Even if you disagree with me, even if you think I'm talking out of my ass, you know, whatever. If it keeps you safe, go ahead and comment. All right? Cheers.